In the previous video, we were looking at the proportion of orange Reese's pieces. We're going to shift gears, and instead of thinking about proportions in this video, we're going to think about means. When we're dealing with proportions, we're usually looking at questions where there's like a categorical variable, such as, do you watch American Idol, yes or no? When we're thinking about means, the question is usually asked so that we get a quantitative answer, such as, how many American Idol winners can you name? I used that example way back in Unit 1. So in the last video, the question was categorical. Are the Reese's Pieces orange, yes or no? And we looked at a proportion of orange Reese's Pieces. Today, we're going to be asking, what is the height of high school students? That's not a categorical variable. They're going to give us a number. Um, we have a quantitative answer, which means we're looking at the mean, not the proportion. This example comes straight from Stats Medic, and they are teachers in Michigan, which is why this is about students in Michigan. I realize that if you're watching this, chances are good that you are not from Michigan. Um, sorry, not sorry? I don't know. It's a good example, so we're going to use it. Here's our population. We have 50 high school seniors, and this is their height in inches. We can see that the variability is pretty widespread. It goes from 140 up to almost 190. I want you to make a guess at the mean of all 50 students and then make another guess of the standard deviation. It doesn't have to be right, you're just guessing. Pause the video and do that now. All right, and now we're gonna take samples of five students. So I set this up in a spreadsheet and I will make sure it's linked in your version of the notes. As always, I forgot to put it in my version. This is super similar to the latest Pokemon um, example we did. First thing you should do is go to File and make a copy so that you can add to this. On the left, you will see all 50 students listed in a random order. What you're gonna do is shuffle this list and then the first five students will be our sample of five. So to shuffle, once again, you right click on column A or click with two fingers, do randomize, and that just shuffles the list. This uh, formula is calculating the average of A2 through A6, so the first five students. That's our sample of five, whoever shows up in the list first. Um, so for this particular sample, the mean height, or x-bar, is 170.2. You just need to add that to your list. Um, don't copy-paste it because it will change if you shuffle this again. So just type it. I want you to add at least five samples to the ones that I already have there. So at least five. Then it says to sketch a dot plot of these sample means. Now it's going to be easiest if you can compare the population to your dot plot of sample means. So what I would recommend you do is open up Staplet and do one quantitative variable multiple groups, have one of them be the population heights, and have one of them be the sample means. So for population, you'll copy and paste this column. For the sample means, you'll copy and paste this column. That way they'll be stacked on top of each other and you'll be able to easily compare their centers and their shapes. So in a moment, you're going to do at least five samples of your own then make stacked dot plots of the population and the sample means and do a sketch in your notes. Pause the video, hit play when you are done with those things. Okay, so here's what mine looks like. Before we answer any of these questions, let's just think. For the population, each of these dots represents one individual high school senior. The dot represents their height. In the sample means distribution, each dot represents one sample of five and it's the mean from that sample of five. So this is an approximate sampling distribution of X bar. If it were a true sampling distribution of X bar, we would have every possible sample of size five, but obviously that is not realistic. So it is an approximate sampling distribution of X bar, where each dot represents the sample mean from one sample of 50. Okay, the shape, center, and spread of this dot plot is what you're gonna do next. And then number five says to compare. So four is only asking you about the sampling distribution. Five is asking you to compare these two distributions. Pause the video and do that now. I would say the shape of the sampling distribution is roughly symmetric. It might be normal. At the time of filming, I only have like 20 data points because I did it myself and I got tired, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, so maybe yours looks more normal. Mine it just looks symmetric. The center looks to be around 167, and the variability is, it's not very spread out. The range is only 12, and most of them, most of the data points, are right around the center. Very few are far away. So now let's compare. I would say for the shape, both of these seem symmetric. The population even seems to be normal. The centers, they both look to be around 167, and the variability, it's much less variable in the sampling distribution. So the range of the sampling distribution is 12, 
compared to almost 50 in the population. Let's look at each of these one at a time. So shape. It turns out that if the population is approximately normal, then the sampling distribution will be approximately normal as well. So this is true for any sampling distribution of sample means. If the population looks approximately normal, then the sampling distribution of x-bar will also be approximately normal, which is definitely what we're seeing here. We also saw that the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as, or very close to, the mean of the population. So this is actually how you calculate the mean of the sampling distribution of x-bar. It's just mu. It's an unbiased estimate of the true mean of the population. And for variability, we notice that the, the variability is much less in the sampling distribution. So the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar is the standard deviation of the whole population over root n. Now you can only use this formula if you have independence or if you have the 10% rule, just like with proportions. It makes sense that this is less variable, because if I'm taking a sample of 5, I am most likely going to get a bunch of values that are close to the true mean. I might end up with this very tall person or these very short people, but more likely I'll get 5 people that are average height. So that explains why this sampling distribution is less spread out than the population. Now, as always, don't memorize these formulas. If you go to the formula sheet, um, last time we were dealing with one population proportion, now we're dealing with one population mean. So here we go, the mean of the sampling distribution of x-bar is mu. Standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar is the standard deviation of the population over root n. So they've organized this very well. Here it says sampling distributions for proportions, one population, there's your formulas. Sampling distributions for means, one population, there's your formulas. We don't need any of this stuff right now, we're just doing the mean and the standard deviation. I think you have everything you need to try this example problem, so why don't you pause the video and see how much you can get through on your own, and then we will recap it together. Okay, so as we're reading this problem, let's note a couple things. It's a normal distribution. We're looking at the mean being 266 days, and this is all human pregnancies. So I'm calling it mu because it's the population. So it's the mean of the population of human pregnancies. Standard deviation of 16. So sigma is 16. I just like to note things like that. Okay, find the probability that a, okay, a randomly chosen woman, pregnant woman, has a pregnancy that lasts more than 270 days. We are dealing with one randomly selected person, which means we're not dealing with the sampling distribution. We are dealing with the population distribution. We are not taking a sample. We are selecting one random person from the entire population. So here's my population distribution. It's normal. They told me that. The mean is at 266. We want the probability that our one randomly selected woman has a pregnancy that is 270 days or more. So there's the picture. Like I said, good first step. Second step is to write out in symbols what we want to find. Here we are trying to find that x is greater than 270. Notice that I'm using x, not x bar. x bar would be if we're taking a sample of women and seeing the mean length of their pregnancies, but this is just a single woman. So I'm doing x. Okay, before we do this, let's make sure. They told us the distribution is normal, so we can use our z-scores and our norm CDFs and all those tools we learned back in unit one. Okay, so we calculate a z-score, we plug it into norm CDF. I'm not gonna get into detail there because we've done that so much. If that's confusing, go back to unit one, rewatch the z-score norm CDF videos. Okay, now, instead of choosing one random woman, we are taking a simple random sample of six pregnant women. So now we're looking at samples. N is six, size, sample size is six. Let X bar be the mean pregnancy length for the sample. Okay, number two is asking us about the sampling distribution of X bar. So a quick sketch. We know it's gonna be normal because the population was normal. So that describes the shape. Approximately normal because the population was approximately normal. And for center, the mean of this sampling distribution is just mu, the mean of the population. So 266. Now, number three asks you about standard deviation. I, these could probably be in the same question, but standard deviation, we just use our formula. We take 16, which was the standard deviation of the population, divide by root n. Here's our new standard deviation. 
Um, to interpret, that would just be to say if we take many samples of this size, we would expect the sample mean to vary by about 6.3, sorry, 6.53 days from the mean of 266 days. Notice the context. I'm using the word days to remind you what we're talking about. And then we have to verify the 10% condition. We will have to assume that there are more than 60 pregnant women in the population. If we're looking at the population of the United States, I think that is reasonable. Okay, find the probability that the mean pregnancy length, mean pregnancy length, for women in the sample exceeds 270 days. This time I don't have a population distribution, I have a sampling distribution. The mean is 266, so when I first do the sketch it looks exactly the same, but look at where I put 270. In the original, when I was looking at the population, the standard deviation was 16, 270 is not a full standard deviation above the mean. It's, it's less than half. I probably could have drawn this even closer. But when we look at the sampling distribution, remember this is less varied. Our standard deviation is now only 6.53. So 270 actually is a bit farther away from the mean, so I've drawn this a little further out. So this is what I mean about the drawings being really helpful. Before I've done any calculations, I've thought to myself, all right, my answer is going to be smaller than in number one because it's less variable. Then I write out in symbols what I'm trying to find. The probability that x bar is greater than 270. This time I'm dealing with x bar, not x. This was a single randomly selected woman. This is the mean of a sample of women. From there, we are calculating a z-score. Notice I'm using the standard deviation from the sampling distribution, not from the population, norm CDF, yada yada yada. So easily the place where students get most tripped up when they deal with means is distinguishing between x and x bar, which is why if I were you I would do things like circle the word a uh in number one, find the probability that a uh randomly chosen pregnant woman, circle that and write down x before you forget. And in a problem like this one, circle the word mean and write down x bar before you forget. The other thing that people mess up the most Make sure that you're only doing norm CDF and z-score calculations on a distribution that is normal. You may be wondering, what happens if the population isn't normal? Do we have to stop? Does that mean we can't do any calculations? That would be a good question if you were thinking that. And in the next video, we'll look at what happens if the population is not normal. Spoiler, you can do the calculations. <laughs>